All right, uh, welcome to the channel. Let's do a crash course on SGLT2 inhibitors, everything you need to know in five minutes. So how do these drugs work? Uh, so the name, sodium glucose cotransporter. So typically what occurs is about 90% of glucose is reabsorbed via this transporter. If you inhibit it with uh, an SGLT2 inhibitor, the result is that glucose is peed out into the urine, okay? So um, this is the primary mechanism for how these drugs work and why they reduce somebody's glucose levels. The drugs themselves, um, you can pause the screen, but the most common is empagliflozin. Uh, the trade name is Jardiance, and um, this is the dosing. Uh, for most SGLT2 inhibitors, they are safe if a person's GFR is above 20, um, but there are some exceptions to that, such as dipagliflozin. And again, these are pills and pills that are taken once a day. How do these drugs uh, work and um, who benefits from them? Well, we created this website called sglt2rx.com. We'll put a link in the show notes below, but you can type in a few data points related to your patient, and then it will show you how well these drugs work, and you can compare them to other classes of medications for type 2 diabetes. What are the indications and contraindications? So for adults with type 2 diabetes, that's an indication. For adults who have heart failure, regardless of whether or not they have type 2 diabetes. For adults with chronic kidney disease, again, regardless of whether or not they have type 2 diabetes. The main two contraindications are if a patient is on dialysis or if they have type 1 diabetes. What are the benefits? So for adults with type 2 diabetes, they improve hemoglobin A1c, they do not cause hypoglycemia, they lead to an approximately 5 uh, pound weight reduction, they are cardioprotective, they improve patients' blood pressure, and they also reduce the risk of heart attack, stroke, or death from cardiovascular causes. Multiple clinical trials have also shown that they reduce a person's risk of being hospitalized with heart failure. And finally, they reduce a person's risk of end-stage renal disease, such as needing to be on dialysis or a doubling in their creatinine. This is incredibly impressive. How about for adults who are on these drugs who don't have type 2 diabetes? What are the benefits here? So um, they will reduce a person's risk of heart failure hospitalization or cardiovascular death. This has been shown in multiple different clinical trials. So if a patient has heart failure, regardless of whether or not they have type 2 diabetes, SGLT2s are effective. Uh, similarly, for adults with chronic kidney disease, regardless of whether or not it's from type 2 diabetes, uh, these drugs reduce the risk of end-stage renal disease, and that refers to doubling in creatinine, need for dialysis, or death from renal causes. What are the side effects of these drugs? So genital infections is uh, common. It affects approximately 8% uh, of all patients. Um, typically, this is mild uh, lightheadedness, at least at first, but generally this improves with time. Uh, volume depletion, again, primarily uh, up front. Uh, low blood pressure is another potential side effect. And then diabetic ketoacidosis. This is rare. I would estimate 1 in 200 people, so that's like a 0.5% risk. And then here's a summary of what we've talked about. Um, so you can pause this slide here, but in short, the three most common SGLT2s you'll see, uh, the indications, the contraindications, the benefits, as well as the side effects. Uh, so finally, and most importantly, um, thank you to the PSI Foundation for providing me with the support um, to work on this video and other knowledge translation activities to improve the use of this class of medications. Thank you to Patricia Olar, who created the slides, and for the feedback from Prachi Ray, Katarina Zorchic, and Tamar Van Bakel. Uh, hopefully you found this helpful. Leave comments, questions, concerns below, and have a great day.